So the first arch we're going to draw is a semicircular, and uh, I'm just going to start off with a very light baseline. And the scale that I'm going to use is going to be 1 to 10, but I don't have 1 to 10 on it, I've got 1 to 100. So instead of this being uh, shown here uh, a metre, this will be 100 millimetres instead, because we're just converting it down to 1 to 10. So what we're going to have is, I'm going to have a pier of 450, which will be there. I'm going to have a 900 opening for my arch. And then I'm going to have another 450 for the other pier. So very, very lightly. I'm not going to do the, the piers very big um, because I just want to get straight into the arch. So I'm only going to do like three or four courses on the piers. But here we go for these. And I will just use this for my gauge. And I'm going to have 75, 150, 225, 300. It's a little bit strange drawing because I'm drawing with my drawing board slightly angled for the camera. Normally I'd have this flat, so it's just a little bit strange. But we'll soldier on. Okay, so I'm going to draw a very faint line across there, and that is going to be what we call our spring and line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a semicircular arch and then I'm going to label it up so we have all the, the terminology for, um, for this. So what we need to do on the spring line, um, we just need to, well we call this also the span. So we're just going to measure halfway of there. So we know we owe 900. There we are, so 450 will be the center, which will be what we call our striking point. And again, I will uh, write on here at the end, as we're going through all this terminology, just a fraction more. So when we were students, we used to draw these in lots of our lessons. And then we're going to have a stretcher and a stretcher there. And we'll go back to our striking point, open it to the stretcher. Here is our arch taken, taken shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very, very lightly draw a centre line through there. Now, we've got our um, arch marked out here. So if I just uh, go through some of the terminology now, uh, we said that this is the span, which is obviously the distance of the between the two reveals. And um, this is also known as a spring and line. It's called the spring and line because the arch springs from this point. And as we're saying points, this is a spring and point. This would be the rise. The underside of the arch, as we look at it on a drawing, is called the intrados. And this is called the extrados. When you look, if you're standing in there and looking up, then obviously that would be called the soffit. Um, and also, we'll draw on here in a little while um, a third of this, which would be 60 degrees. So this section, 
and obviously it will be on this side as well. These two sections here, that one and that one, are called the haunch and the top third is called the crown. So that's the crown of the arch. So this is yeah, some of the terminology we got. And again, I'll label this up um, better when we um, uh, actually start drawing everything in. So what we need to do now is understand, I'm gonna do one side as a rough arch and one side as an axed arch. And you'll understand what both of those are in a short while. What I need to do though first is just change this into 75 millimeters. So on a scale of one to 10, this would be 10 between here. So 75 would be, each one of these is 10 mil. So you've got 50 mil, doing my pencil, 50 mil to there, 60, 70, 75. So what we need to do then is if we're doing a rough arch with whole bricks, we would work this out on the intrados. And again, you do it very, very lightly. I remember when we were students uh, doing this and um, if you get to the center and it didn't quite work right, you'd, our tutor or our lecturer used to tell us that we used to have to open it up or um, close up a little bit according to what we needed to do to make it fit. But um, our drawing lessons as students were really enjoyable. So again, I don't want to be doing this too much. And we can see here that that is really good for a center brick. That worked really nice. So what I want to do now is just go back to here, 112 mil, the center. And we are going to go back to the spring and point. And we're going to have what we call a two ring rough arch. And we're going to just go to there. So what we need to do with this is this is very, very awkward. We would have to close this right down And we would have to have this about 37 mil. So when it opens up, it opens up to 75 mil. And I'll show you why. And this was always, again, when we were students and we were doing this, this was always very tricky. That's quite good. So this represents a 75 millimeter circle. And the reason 75 millimeters is because that is what a brick with a joint is. And we would use this now to mark our headers. So we would keep that there. Sorry, go from one side there. And what I would do, I would always just mark one side first. And you see with a rough arch, you're using normal bricks, which give you wedge shaped joints. And uh, I'll show you this very soon. And again, everything we're drawing, we should be drawing very, very lightly, because if we have like, any errors, we want to be able to correct them and I will just go to that one and then we go to this side and these are our wedge shaped joints so 
So rough arches are obviously the the easiest way to do an arch. And um, I suppose they called them rough because they didn't really take a lot of effort. There's no, no cutting involved. It's just like normal bricks. And with the normal bricks, you do get these wedge-shaped joints. Whereas this size, we're going to do as an axed arch. And we'll go through what that is in a moment. So what I should be doing, really, is marking out this side as well um, which I will do in a short while but uh, for now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark out this side and again I should be working to the center 75 mm as before this time instead of marking out on the intrados I'm going to mark out on the extrados and again we may have to do a slight adjustment I'm going to do it without marking first and when I'm happy with this I will um, just mark it with one single joint so you can see there that we've got like half a brick left over so I'll just get that the right way around start in the center again this again a lot of trial and error but it is worth it it definitely definitely is worth it and that was close but not close enough so we go again this time I'm gonna risk marking them So after we've drawn this one, the next arch we will draw will be a segmental. And um, after that, we're going to go to the Gothic arch. And with the Gothic arch, we're going to draw two different types of Gothic. And then we're going to do my favorite arch, which is, which is a Florentine. And then we're going to do a, a three-centered arch after that. So once we've done that, this time we go to the center because these ones are radiating. I'm gonna do this one all the way through just to there. And these ones being axed arches will have a parallel joint. And these are what I am tending to build nearly all the time on site now. Now, this, as we said, is an axed arch. The one previous that obviously we just mentioned was a rough arch. The other arch that we get is even finer than the one that I'm doing now, and that is a rubbed and gauged arch. Now, with The one we've got on the left hand side there, the rough arch, the joints are wedge shaped and uh, the wedge can go from like 5mm right up to about 20mm. Um, these ones on a axed arch, the joint should be between 4 and 6mm. When we come to rubbed and gauged arches, the joints are down to 2mm. So um, much, much, much finer work. Okay, so I'll pause now, and when I come back, you'll see this will be drawn in as well, and I will then start marking up um, all the terminology of what we've got here. 